Your nation, your news. One American News Network. Our law and justice story tonight. Two more bombs mailed to former Vice President Joe Biden and liberal actor Robert De Niro. This comes after another suspicious package was sent to Democratic Congresswoman Maxine Waters. And according to law enforcement, the packages sent to George Soros and CNN, those were sent yesterday, could have been hand-delivered. So let's take a look at the newest developments in this case. With me now, former military intelligence officer, member of the FBI National Joint Terrorism Task Force, and member of the Donald J. Trump 2020 Campaign Advisory Board, Steve Rogers. Steve, thanks for joining me. That's quite a resume. Well, pleasure to be here. Thank you. All right, Steve, I think what a lot of people are wondering is how long does it take to catch uh, a terrorist who sends bombs like this, and what are law enforcement doing specifically? They say there's an abundance of forensic information, you know, there's signatures on these bombs. What does that mean? Well, to begin with, uh, President Trump's quick, quick decisiveness to uh, bring together multiple law enforcement agencies in this investigation will bring this uh, uh, suspect, if you will, uh, to law enforcement uh, pretty soon. Uh, look, uh, the president got all these law enforcement, the FBI, the, the, the uh, CIA, uh, military intelligence, uh, you name it, he just said that he would bring the full weight of law enforcement down on this investigation, and he did. And I'm mentioning that because now what we can do, what law enforcement could do is have a comparative analysis of all of these bombs. Now you talk about a signature. The signature is this. A bomb maker uh, leaves a signature, meaning that he makes the bomb the same way with the same material, and so what he leaves that as a major clue. So at this moment, the FBI and other law enforcement agencies are doing a comparative analysis of all these bombs that were found in addition to perhaps other bombs in the past that were collected and found by law enforcement agencies, which possibly could lead them to a suspect. Right. So and this is what you did for a living. This is your expertise. Sketch a profile of a person. And I know this is stereotypical, but that's how it works. Sketch a profile of what kind of person you expect them to be looking for. Uh, I, I read a report that rarely is a person who would actually go to the effort of constructing and mailing bombs. Rarely are they a first time offender. That There is a higher likelihood that they've uh, levied threats against perhaps even a president in the past. What kind of person are they looking for? Well, they're looking for a loner. They're looking for someone who uh, probably uh, is somehow, some way, uh, uh, aware of the political atmosphere in our country. Uh, they're looking for a person that is, in fact, uh, perhaps a repeat offender. What you're going to see is the law enforcement agencies build a psychological profile of this person. And uh, it's going to be very important to them in order to uh, size up just who this person is. So that's what they're looking for. I don't believe that there are multiple people involved in this. It, it's just a crazed person who has decided to take some sort of action on their own, and they're going to get caught. A lot of evidence, by the way. Because the bombs didn't go off, and in my opinion, uh, I don't believe they wanted these bombs to go off, they left a treasure chest of evidence and information for law enforcement to follow. All right, so talk to us about what that information is. When an FBI agent, when law enforcement agents look at a, an undetonated bomb that's in packaging with printed labels, what, what clues did they see that maybe the layperson like me wouldn't know to look for? Okay, you're going to look for DNA. Uh, very, very important. You're going to look for how the bomb was made. For example, you could get uh, pieces of the uh, material of that bomb, uh, wires, batteries, uh, anything that was in that uh, uh, bomb, and you could look for serial numbers. You could actually find out where some of this bomb-making material was purchased. Uh, a lot of that information that people look for. And by the way, let me add that sometimes these criminals, these bomb makers, uh, if they hand deliver them like you alluded to earlier, look at just a thread. On a, on a piece of clothes, a piece of footprint, a hair falling off their head. I mean, this is a lot, a lot of information that the FBI can collect at these crime scenes. And it will lead them exactly to the person that they're looking for. Take a little time, but they're going to get caught. And, and what, what timeline would you expect? Do you expect within, the, within a day, two days? Do you expect a week? Do you expect a month? What should the public expect? Or when should the public expect to hear information about the suspect? 
Well, a few things to keep in mind. One, there's, there's no telling when that they're going to uh, find this individual. Uh, we hope that there's no more packages coming. If there are, obviously, the law enforcement agencies are going to collect information from that. But because of, like I said earlier, the quick action of the president to bring these law enforcement agencies together, I think it's going to be sooner rather than later. But something important you just said, the public, anyone who has seen anything, uh, what do we say? You see something, you say something, especially on social media. We find that a lot of these individuals leave clues on social media, whether it be in chat rooms, whether it be a posting on a social media platform. So if the people out there, the public, have any bits of information that they think that they think could help, they need to get that to law enforcement. Right. If you see if you see something, say something. If you think you might have seen something, still say something. It could be important. One more question for you. The post office aspect of this, if this was sent through the United States Postal Service, uh, I believe they have a tracking system where each each destination along the route to the final destination, and this starts is it, this starts from the origin of the package. They take pictures of it and track it by label. Does that make it does that make it much easier uh, to track who might have seen this, to look at cameras? How does that how does that information play a role in finding out? who this person is. Well, a big role. Yeah, uh, an individual that brings a package to a post office, you're absolutely uh, correct. There is a tracking mechanism. But the most important bit of information will be if those post offices have video cameras outside their establishments. Or, may I add, a lot of post offices are in the middle of communities where businesses have video cameras, where there are traffic video cameras. So as soon as they find out where some of these packages were mailed, they're going to scour that area and get all the video footage that they can get from everyone and everywhere they can gather it. Right, and hopefully they'll be able to do that. Let me, let me ask you about something you said earlier. You said you didn't believe, based on the fact that these explosive devices did not detonate, not even a one of them did, and the, the white powder, I believe, in at least one of the packages, they've already come out and said, well, that wasn't, that wasn't anything uh, dangerous. It was benign white powder. If these, if these uh, explosive devices were never intended to explode, what does that say about the person who sent them, the psychological makeup, or the motivation here? What kind of information does that give law enforcement if you believe that it wasn't intended ever well, to explode? Well, that's where your uh, psychological profilers come in. This is an individual that obviously at this point didn't want to see anybody hurt or killed. They just wanted to scare the living daylights out of everybody. They wanted to tie up law enforcement and whatever message that they're trying to send obviously failed because as all of our uh, elected officials have said, this isn't going to intimidate anybody. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is that, uh, again, because these things weren't detonated, because they didn't explode, whether this person knows it or not, they probably know it now, they left a lot of information, a lot of uh, intelligence that will be important to conclude this investigation. Right, I certainly, I think I can speak for all Americans here when I say I certainly hope so. I hope it's quick, I hope they find this person, and I hope this person is prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Steve, thank you so much for your analysis, I really appreciate it. On that note, we're going to turn to another story.